So what is big band jazz? Now, now it's time to delve a little deeper into some specifics. And I'm gonna talk about some of my personal favorites, what I've taken from each, how I've adapted to my own playing, and honestly just how they've inspired me in, in what ways and how they've affected how I play the, the uh, drums. First idea that I just played was from one of my absolute favorite, that's Louis Belson. So it seemed pretty complicated and like, oh, what was that? The, all that was, was doubles on the snare with different accents. That's the key. Now, a little side quest and a little shout out to somebody is the way I actually developed to be able to play this was by going through Mr. Tommy Igo's books and everything and his instructions, everything, even his lesson on Drumeo, of how to keep consistent doubles because that's the key here. If, if I play a little bit, That's all doubles with different accents. So shout out to Tommy for allowing me to be able to keep consistent doubles throughout. Louis, very known for that and what he would do, especially in the Skin Deep solo. Is he was actually playing two bass drums. I don't have two bass drums here, but he was basically keeping uh, time going with his feet while he was doing these crazy accents on his hands. So that's number one. So before we move on and start talking about Buddy Rich, I just wanted to give you all a chance to check out Grayson's brand new course inside of Drumeo, all about big band drumming. Now for any of you who have watched Buddy Rich play drums and also watched Grayson play drums, you'll probably notice some similarities when it comes to hand technique and how fast these drummers can play. Now in Grayson's course, he actually breaks down his approach to hand technique and how he developed the speed that he has. So if you want to check out the course, there's a link right below this video to start a free seven-day trial to Drumeo, or there's a button right here on screen. And with that, let's check out Buddy Rich. Obviously, if you can't tell, that was heavily inspired by Buddy Rich. And what specifically I'm taking from him is that left hand consistent pattern of notes. Stream of constant just braid of left hand. I love that. It's a cool little way to keep flow within your drum solo. The phrasing in the space is one thing. The other side of it is this, where that kind of you know, connector of notes is your left hand. Now, Sunny. One of my personal favorites. And the element this time is a subtle one. I'm gonna play something again, a little different, and let's see if you notice. A lot of times in Sonny solos and charts, when he you know, would play with a band, he would play phrases on the toms and around the drum set, followed by the same phrase on a cymbal. Now 
and a solely assemble. So. Cool little trading back and forth with yourself. Uh, he would also do full phrases around the toms and the snare drum, and then around the cymbals, so. Kind of adds a little consistency within your sound, within your playing, and the flow, just like we talked about with the Buddy Rich left hand, is what's key. Sonny actually uses this a lot too, I should have mentioned. So, Sonny, Papa Joe Jones, and Sam Woodyard. And that is, going back to the showmanship aspect of something that can also add to your drum sound, is muting with your elbow, your arm, your stick, adding something different. Something like that. So, Papa Joe Jones would do, you know. something to that effect. Probably my most used, and honestly stolen from all these drummers, element is the act of using crossovers in your drumming. So what I mean by that is instead of playing only like this, you could play. I love crossovers so much. Yes, it adds the visual element like we talked about before with showmanship, entertainment, very important. But let's get it you know, right, it's very hard to play. The same exact melodies without crossing over. You get a completely different sound. You would have to play it wouldn't really be very appealing visually or playing wise cuz you know you're very it looks honestly a little stiff sometimes if you're yeah, it's a little visual element get a different sound more opportunities for exploration so the main takeaway of this is first learn the examples i showed you the great starting points from the doubles to the single-handed thing to the, the triplet thing from Sonny around the drum set, whatever it is, learn them, practice them. The goal is not to just take those and steal them and you know, oh, now I have a million fills now. Now it is, make your own. Make your own with them. Take Sonny's idea and expand it, contract it, whatever it is. If you do that, you don't want to do it with only one drummer. You want to do it across genres, types of drummers, ages of drummers, young, old, whatever it is. And that's where my playing has come from. It's a combination of many drummers. And the reason I feel very strongly about that is, how did Sonny, a drummer I look up to, learn? How did Art Blakey learn? They didn't have these drum books, they didn't have these nice pub published pieces of paper, or drumio, <laughs> to learn from. They had to watch and listen to other drummers. And that's the key. Now luckily with drumming you can watch other drummers, you can learn from them. So you know, the music and the books is great. But if you wanna you know, gain vocabulary, you really have to listen to drummers before you that make you say, what the heck.